it's a trade-off, right? When you live in Australia, you you get like the good time for GSL and seeing some of the Korean tournaments, but you get bad time for the EU ones. Mm-hmm. Um, Starlock has they solved that by just not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, curious to see if we're gonna see any you know, clash of styles here between a Korean player and an Australian player. So. Yeah, I'm curious as well. Like it. it's, I I remember back in the day, you know, I I, I also had my my degen um kind of period where I was also a furry, just like you, Chase. But I, it's just it's a hard lifestyle, you know. Like it's it's. it's... <laughs> God. Anyway, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Glittering Ashes LE, we have our South Korean finalist from last week. We have, representing himself currently, it is Chance. And now that I'm unmuted, and, I, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to introduce this player as well, <laughs> it's probably in the top right. Playing for Cranky, it is the Australian Pro Starter. <laughs> See, this is where I feel oh, like man. the webcam would be useful because if it was on, I could like look over and I could see. I can see when you're dying. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was introducing Chance, and then you start introducing him. Oh, and I muted? check my Discord. And I'm, I'm <laughs> muted. <laughs> oh oh my. my. Oh boy, but yeah, here we go. Um, what? Mm-hmm. You know the part of this matchup I'm the expert at the most. Please mm-hmm. tell me. Tell me, you should know by now. I'll tell you the part of the matchup that you like the most. Oh man, it's a, it's about the starting units, mate. That's that's what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, oh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> You're like, let's go, adept stalker. Stalker Sentry? I'm a, oh my god. <laughs> I'm a gambling man. Like I'm going to predict two Stalkers from Starduck oh? and a Stalker and a Sentry from Chance. Oh, Check this out. okay, okay. Check this out. Are you ready? Oh. Bang. Oh, sh- <laughs> oh shit. I mean, the other way around. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, the roles are reversed, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Oh my god. No, like honestly, it, it goes. It just goes to show, like how in sync you are, how like in, how attuned you are to this matchup. Even if you are like on the brink of death, like you, that was pretty. That was a pretty close prediction. Yeah, well, well j- judging by you know the the sentry is a more conservative opener. You get that sentry energy, but you can't really go across the map. Mm-hmm. I thought Starduck might donkey it up, and Chance, as we've seen, um, he does like to. Kind of at least chill compared to other players in the sparkling tuna, mm-hmm. but um, I, th- I think I think this pylon by Starduck as well. It's gonna let him see these two units as well. So I've said as well three times now, as well. But um, as well. Meanwhile, we have a probe. Also, well, heading up to the top of the map for chance. I'm curious. Did you say donkey just because Seether was in the chat? No, but Seether is a donkey. Okay. <laughs> shaking my head, shaking my head. But yes, yes, Starduck did um did confirm the opening units, and because of this sentry opener, he is going for hallucinated scout as well, just to confirm what is in the base and make sure you know nothing crazy is going on. He will be able to see the robo follow up from Chance, and as you said, Chance does have that cheeky pylon out there on the map as well. Yeah, he's actually gonna poke here too. There are three stalkers in a battery. Uh, maybe no. Starduck's gonna gonna keep that sentry safe. Mm-hmm. But um, a fun fact for all you you kids out there, um, the earlier you make sentries, the more energy they bank. So that's kind of why we see um, both players are building up a reasonable sentry force. But um, Chance is actually gonna warp in a couple of adepts. It looks like he might want to try and sneak into the main here while pressuring the front. Oh yeah, I mean, this man has options, right? He can sneak into the main, he can even dive on top of sentries if they're left unattended, um, or even go towards the natural, because we do see the probes transferring over towards that mineral line, so Chance has a lot of potential um, to, to get any kind of damage done. Or at least keep Starduck at home. Yeah, actually, and then they go, good work by Starduck there to block off with a shield battery. Um, correct me, Light, does a shield battery... Well, that probe's vibing, isn't it? Um, does a shield battery kind of 
cancel for less minerals? Or is it the same as a pile of? I think it's less. No. It's Apparently it's not. I think 75. that's the same. Yeah, same. There yeah. you go. So I know, there, can, I know can... there is a difference though. Otherwise, they they wouldn't do it, right? Oh, I guess it's it's easier to press BB than press BE, right? <laughs> I guess so. But, um, oh, Starduck, he's kind of after seeing those two adepts, he's kind of hmm. you know got an inkling of the suspicion here. And oh no! <laughs> oh. oh, I thought they might have been distracted. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, he's going to see it! <laughs> he it. Oh, what a demonstrating it's the main! <laughs> oh, exactly. Unfortunately, what this time... What a distraction. Time, yeah, Starduck was distracted by that proxy gateway. He does have to contend with all these adepts, and probes are getting picked up. Uh oh Yeah, even pulling a couple of probes, too. I'm not too sure about this, but chance. <laughs> Sending the, the adepts right to where these, these units are. We'll get taken out, but, um... Decent little trade, it's always, um... When you make harass units such as adepts, it's always like reasonable to trade mm. um, for their supply costs at least. Yeah. But let's say start up going for a third base. Third base already halfway done for chance. Um, how do you see this game evolving? Right? Do you think we're going to see some sort of timing? I know Chance likes his one or two immortal timings, mm -hmm. but I think both players can be a bit conservative. Yeah, uh, personally, I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen those immortals that you were talking about. Even though we had a relatively fast robo, Chance hasn't really invested in any of that, um, just mainly detection, just to be safe. Um, so he doesn't have that kind of tech advantage, but he does have an upgrade advantage. His plus one ha is like does have a massive lead here for Chance. Meanwhile, Sardok, he's already here across the map, and oh, oh, he does does have a stalker advantage. Yeah, this is a little spooky. Both players do have blink, but Starduck's got a pretty good com cave actually. He's in this awkward position between the the main and the natural. These probes are a bit risky, kind of transferring here. But um, as long as Starduck has the sentry energy, he can kind of just keep poking away here. And we just have the first immortal for chance popping now. And it's not going to come out for quite some time, right? Yeah, exactly. It's still only just now started. So Starduck, he has a lot of potential. He just keeps ca catching transferring probes as well. So not bad. And he even picks up the sentries. Yeah, and the sentries are very valuable units. Even a, a sentry, uh, what's it called? The shield battery button being being procced there by chance. So Overcharged. feeling the heat a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Overcharge, that's it. And now <laughs> being a bit risky coming forward here. I'm not sure about this light. I mean, I think... Oh yeah, there we go, and now Chance can't blink away, and these Stalkers are going to get one shot. Yeah, exactly, Stalkers are falling left and right, that first Immortal is on the way though, it did finish up, but Overcharge has already popped, it looks like the reinforcements are going to be just enough, and Chance, with the help of this Immortal, should be able to force this away, but we have another warp in. <laughs> yeah, the Immortal went the other way apparently, but I'm going to start like... That's the thing about Blink, right? You can be very versatile, especially when you've got recall as a possibility too. Mm. And we see while this pressure is going for chance, Starduck's just probing away at his own third base at home. And look at the production tab, you know, he's doing a bit more than in chances right now. So successful push there, I want to say, for Starduck and very non-committal as well. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's also something that he had to do, right? If you recall, his third base was so late compared to that of Chance, um, and catching all those transferring probes, like, it really did help him catch up in that respect, actually get ahead in that work account. Yeah, and ahead he is indeed. It's only by five, but... Ah, uh, just to say, wait, wait, wait where, where are these probes going? Wait, wait, turn around. Oh my god. <laughs> Right, oh, well, I do this. <laughs> I do this all the time, man. Oh, feels, I can't say it. <laughs> feels bad, man. Feels bad. The miss rally probes are being sent into the middle of the map. This, this spotter probes, you know. Like, uh... <laughs> they are indeed. They're all gonna spot that one little radius. Um, but Zealot's coming in here. Very good turret, not turret. Photon cannon placed by chance, and mm -hmm. even though he's not gonna get the most damage done by clearing up these zealots, that's a bit of mining time delayed. So, um, good work there by Starduck. Yeah. And I mean, fourth it, base in the way for chance. It also forced everything home. I think what's important is that now that the cannon has been killed, Sardak is throwing down a dark shrine. So detection or lack of detection is going to be an important factor. But chance he's already you know playing it safe. He does immediately replenish that photon cannon, but DTs will eventually come into play. Yeah, indeed. Actually, we see the the two kind of different sides of the the protoss here we've got a dark shrine on one side and um, we've got a high templar archives on the other so both players potentially going to be going into um archons but also we've got a robo bay for chance too do you think that could mean disruptor 
Oh, man, he's going to get full skillless. He's going to make nothing but Colossus. Let's go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm actually it's going to be for Disruptors. Like, Chance, like, he's taking a pretty hard. Starduck is stuck on basically a gateway army. So the longer this game goes on, the harder it's going to be for him. Oh, my God. Starduck forced to immediately cancel his fourth base. Yeah, now we're kind of saying as the huge DT warp in going to cancel the, the fourth base of Chance as well. Chance is going to jump in here and Sarlacc, keep in mind, you know, there's two immortals for Chance. Sarlacc's got a battle probe. He doesn't have any tech. Yeah, exactly. How is he going to fare here? He does have defender's advantage, overcharge, and the cannons are putting in a lot of work, to be honest. Maybe Sarlacc, he's going to try and get on top of these immortals. He and Chance, I don't know what he's doing here. He's kind of left his immortals out in the open, these zealots taking a lot of those shots, and even the warp prism going down light. Meanwhile, the DTs at the oh. third base is going to force a recall, but I think that a lot of work is killed for, for Starduck in the end, but Chance lost a lot of his army. Yeah, it's really hard to call how that went because I, I was a little bit surprised by how many probes Starduck lost, by the way. 24 probes. Jeez, he lost everything at his third base. He's kind of all in at this point. He's not too far down when it comes to that worker count, but at least he reset the, the immortal count. But, oh, God, there is one disruptor. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this disruptor switch, however, given the you know, charge lots and, and, and blink stalk. It's very hard to kind of connect. And even we have some DTs coming in from behind. <laughs> I think, however, there is an Observer, he's going to maybe push these Dark Templar back light, but, um, yeah, now looking at the army supply, Sarlacc looks to be in a hard position. Yeah, and that is it. GG gets called. Chance will be taking that first game. Well, it wasn't easy, though. Yeah. <laughs> It was a it was a tricky game, yeah. And, and even though Starduck, even though he lost twenty what was it, twenty seven, twenty eight probes, he was only down like seven probes at the end yeah. of that. So um maybe at the potential to macro out of it, but as we know chance he did have um more reasonable tech. Dark Temple didn't really scale well once they've been scouted. Yeah. Uh, they're more of a, a unit that hits first, um kind of fades away later. But um well played by chance that uh to kind of take that game despite losing a lot of his army in that last push yeah yeah it, uh, like touching on what you just said it, it is that Starduck's play style was a little more committed <laughs> right like like he had to end the game there just because they're you know he didn't really invest in his future um like some some people tend not to do he, he was a little bit short-sighted there <laughs> um <laughs> but you know you can find success with that com with that style like imagine a world where chance recalled back home but he left his observer across the map right or something like that you know if he didn't have detection other than those photon cannons maybe dt's swing the scales in Starduck's favor you know there's there's always that kind of that wild factor that's that's thrown in yeah, we saw the DTs did they, their job, even though Starduck was forced to cancel his own fourth base. Mm -hmm. He got the fourth base of chance, but that's kind of a lot of these techie invested into. Um, you know, killing the fourth base is good, but you kind of want to get economic damage done with those DTs. He was forced to show his hand, mm -hmm. and in the end, chance managed to adapt to it. So, heading into game number two here, Light, hoping for another good show. Oh, yeah, I know we all are, and here. In the bottom left is someone else is looking for a good show. He's currently le leading the series 1-0. It's the South Korean Protoss. It is Chance. And spawning in the top right position of Hardwire LE with the two little robots in his base. It is the player from Cranky, the player from Australia. <gasps> Give it up. <laughs> Okay. It's beautiful. Um, I'm great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've been better, I'll be honest. Um, Fever is starting to take hold, but that's okay. Like, Mate, are these probes going to kiss? No. 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 They, they avoid each other completely. You know, social distancing is social always... Distancing. Yeah, it's always something that... I should, <laughs> I should take a note out of their book. I was about to say, it's a really important factor of... of uh, life nowadays, and you know, you don't want to end up like Chase. No, um, yeah, S who knew today I'd be streaming Dying to Protoss with COVID? So, <laughs> it's a funny world, isn't it? Like, here about, we are again. I was about to say, 
it took getting COVID for you to stream on Twitch. Like, how does that, how does that work? Like, <laughs> it took literally, I just wanted to watch a Zerg play and no one was doing it. So I, I did it. But, but um, here we go again. Like, the best part of PvP, in my opinion, place your bets, boys. What's <laughs> it's going to be? Uh, it's going to be two stalkers from chance again. Oh, or like, a stalker sentry from Sardak. What do you reckon? So you, so you think that they're going to do the same thing? I think they're going to do the same thing, but reverse. I think Chance is going to restore the Sentry and start up two Stalkers. Oh! Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> you were close. Uh, so both players kind of opening up safe. It does make a lot of sense for a Chance to open up safe this game because, you know, he's already got a lead, right? So why not um, play things, you know, with, with things kept kept closest to the chest here for a Chance? Um, but Starduck, he doesn't take the bait. You know, he doesn't go aggressive. He doesn't uh, donkey it up, as you would say. Yeah, and again, we see both players kind of dropping the pylon at the natural. Wanting to kind of spot the first units that are really kind of coming out here, but Zadok is hiding um, a second unit, um, whereas Chance is also kind of hiding it. But Zadok might even let his pylon finish. No, he's going to cancel it. And, um, yeah, so far, a little bit more in the dark here, but I feel like if you're a... If you... You know, you want to. You'd only reveal one stalk if you had more reason to hide something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the fact that you only see one stalker is a little bit telling as well. Like, obviously, that means it's, it, w it wouldn't really be two stalkers, right? It'd be crazy if he was hiding one on purpose. Um, and you wouldn't go stalker adapt or anything crazy like that. So, yeah. Or, crazy or, or would you? Happen. Which, exactly. This is high level StarCraft. <laughs> Mind games is everything. And now you see if the who was a phoenix, you know, maybe, maybe they didn't make a phoenix at all. I mean, a, a century at all. And this is a real phoenix. You never know. You never know, mate. Mind game, real. You should play pro. Even though they, even though they scout the, the sentries with the hallucinated phoenix, maybe you know it was a. Maybe the sentries are hallucinated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't actually open the sentry. They just I went sentry instead and hallucinated sentries. But, uh, here we go. The first kind of deviation. And they're both deviating in the same direction. We have Twilight Councils, a Forge for Chance. Is it a deviation if they both go the same way? Um, maybe they hallucinated the Forge. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! But um, Starduck is going to notice this Forge, and mm -hmm. what is the main thing this tells Starduck like? Because it, you know, you're not going to invest into a Forge and then and do something wacky. How is Starduck going to adapt to this? I, as as we get into how Starduck is going to adapt, I just love that we're, we were like talking so much about hallucinations and chances actually hallucinated scouting, but with stalkers on the left hand side of the map. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, not, that's actually sick. It's not something you see. I mean, it's a slower uh, scout as well because it's, you know, the, because of their movement speed. So I don't, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Um, <laughs> but it, it does tell Starduck that, you know, his opponent is going to be much more heavy on their gateway units, I imagine, right? Um, so now we see a bit of a role reversal, how in game one, Chance was a lot more focused on his immortal production, right? For his big immortal push. Uh, whereas this game, there's no Robo and Starduck takes it instead. Yeah, that's right. I mean, kind of say... I'm judging just by how this game's starting to unfold. The third base coming down for Chance already. I think Chance is going to go a bit more gateway heavy. Um, maybe not so heavy on the tech as we see Starduck getting his own tech. But it looks like Starduck wants to kind of hit a timing here. And Chance without a shield battery, he's a little bit vulnerable. And his blinks can finish later than... Um, actually, Starduck's will finish um, later. So, so yeah. yeah. Cool. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Despite that, regardless, Starduck is here at the third base, and oh, he does actually catch a couple of these sentries. Some of them are going to get picked off, but from both sides. And oh, does Starduck have enough stalkers really here with the reinforcements? It looks like it looks like Chance is going to be able to maybe push this back. Maybe up, up, up. Conque, yeah, it's though. a slightly better concave. Yeah. yeah, for the Starduck, but I think with his defender's advantage and this war prism is a bit delayed, um, he's going to be able to push Starduck back, but um. Judge with these units kind of getting shimmed out. Um, Starduck's going to Immortals now, and we see it looks like Chance is just going to be going to charge. So, what dynamic is going to happen here? Like, can you explain? <laughs> explain to Chase's <laughs> little brain. You know, uh, what what is going to happen here? Charge lots versus Immortals. 
Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have charge ults on both sides, um, but like this is something that we were both alluding to before, right? Like Immortals are gonna be the really big game changer, or are they? You know, it's, it can always be really difficult um, to kind of maneuver and control them well when you're up against a bunch of Zealots, right? Immortals don't do the best DPS against Zealots, you know, they're great against Stalkers, not much else, um, except for like other armored units, so it, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for Stardock to really um, control it well and as the game goes on okay never mind he's actually working on his own upgrades well, thankfully yeah Stark is kind of securing his own third base and we see chance is taking quite a worker advantage that's just uh, the advantage of getting that third base up before your opponents um looks like i'm not sure if this is it's kind of the meta we've seen this reasonably um at the moment a bit more of a emphasis on gateway units and actually we do have chance to scout that third base but um i think that with the current situation like neither player is taking gases at their third yet um i think expect to see yeah with these extra gateways that are just going down we're gonna see a bit of a gateway palooza going on this game lab hmm. yeah i imagine so and chance is going to be the initiator as he's now moving out across the map um he still doesn't have his um his war prison though with his army so i'm a little bit concerned about that okay he only just now starts it it is going to be on the way um well, i don't know if he wants to really take a fight here but stardock uh, is still focused on the rocks oh god yeah grabbing three stalkers for free there but with these zealots tanking this aggressive blink forward chance has to run away he doesn't have any units on the ground to support as we see there we go templar archive is going to be his tech of choice but this is a very scary army for stardock and chance is going to need to be a bit careful here light he's got two sentries but they don't have a lot of energy yes uh, chance being punished for how over eager he was here i'm kind of glad um <laughs> because he did get those two oh, stalker, three stalkers <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah yeah like it's one of those scenes where like it's mate you shouldn't have gotten those stalkers but at least at least Stardock was able to fight back now with that war prism he warps in a massive wave of these stalkers can he do it can he break through the defenses of chance yeah and that immortal's looking very scary in Stardock's army but as we see uh -oh. chance is going for a full kind of switch and a charge watch but he's naturally here has been exposed as he consolidates his army and the immortal might get sniped the shield battery gets popped with battery overcharge and chance is microing with the the warp prism thing in my bob and the zealous doing quite a bit of a choke point however yeah exactly Stardock utilizing the sim city against chance right now the zealots are not getting any surface area now we have a surround of zealots of his own Stardock. he's going to be able to take out the majority of this the archons are still standing strong though like can chance forces back bring in mind he lost a lot of workers here yeah actually chance lifted up an arc on there but it got sniped by the bling stalkers in the warp prison and starlock is not relenting he is even though he's getting a fourth base at home he's still warping in and chance he might have overextended here oh exactly the archon's gonna get picked off there are only stalkers remaining there is a shield battery here at the third base so chance will be able to fall back to that but starlock he doesn't even care he wants to go to he wants he wants to go for the kill he wants to go for the natural <laughs> yeah, I think these, these charge watts might actually be stuck with this one. The orange health is forced to watch his brethren get slain. But I think that now, looking at the supply lights, Starlock is up in work as he is up in army. And I think that Chance is in such an awkward position here. And Starlock is going to, you know, possibly start to tip the scales in his face. Yeah, exactly. Starlock, he's even up in bases as he threw down a fourth base behind all of this. He's still only working working on stalkers, and it looks like, oh, his war prism is he left exposed. Chance will be able to clean this up, and with that, he'll finally be able to breathe. And now we kind of have to take a bit of a step back here. Um, Starduck, he's again, he's catching up. Plus two is on the way. Um, and the tech was reset on both sides. We just have stalker on stalker action. Oh, my God. Oh, no, that's a bit of a choke point there for Chance. I feel like, you know, as this game goes on, he's going to have to take these defensive angles, use that defender's advantage, which, you know, Stardock's got warp, or he doesn't have the, he lost his, his what's the jiggy the, the warp prism, so defender's advantage nullified a bit, but I think looking at both players' kind of situations here, yeah, Stardock, he's, he's, kind of, he's got the extra base, but he's also, you know, there's no kind of tech or anything that Chance has to help him kind of, Inch together a lead in this game. I think as this goes on, Starlock is looking better and better. Yeah, 100%. He's even able to pounce on top of this Stalker army again. The Zealous is doing such a great job to help buffer and help soak up so many of those Stalker shots. And Starlock is able to force all of this back. And Chance is losing so many Stalkers in the retreat. Yeah, as we see, like Starlock, he's got a tr he's got a trickle of um Zealots in his army too. So it it's kind of a 
it's it's very it's gonna be very the difficult prison, for Chance the to prison. get ahead. Ah, 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 oh, the prison! Oh my oh, oh, god! My god. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, getting a bit lucky there, Chance did. Man, but looking at the production tab, like, like we have a Robo Bay coming down, but I don't think they, he's gonna be able to get any units out in time. He's struggling to just hold his three bases here, let alone deal with the fourth that Stardock is still established. And I think as this game goes on, just look at the supply light chances, chances are starting to dwindle all. Oh my <laughs> god, sorry. welcome Steel Mode. <laughs> We've reached the point where Chase's brain has <laughs> deteriorated to the point where he's a puppet. Um, <laughs> oh god. Oh no. But um, I agree, like Chance needs time. You were talking about how like, uh, our Disruptor is really the way to go. I mean, if he survives long enough, if he actually gets a decent Disruptor count, like, it's gonna be great for Chance. And Stardock, he's still kind of, you know, posturing around. Um, he never rebuilt, or I thought he did, um, but he never rebuilt his War Prism, so he just can't keep that pressure up. He's having a hard time breaking through, but, oh my god, here we go, reinforcements have finally arrived. Yeah, and this is kind of blink can also be quite effective too for Stardock. It allows him to maneuver into his um his engagements a bit better to get a bit more of a concave but um all things considered chance is holding reasonably at the at the moment with the limited resources he has he has a disruptor halfway done mm -hmm. uh, a couple of zealots going on natural also but i think as this game goes on it's just going to turn into a numbers game right and even though he repels his attack again and again and a cute little zealot run by the main of them mm -hmm. Um, Stardock as well. I think it's just going to be a numbers game. Yeah, unfortunately the War Prism in the main base of Stardock did just get sniped, so now Chance can't harass across the map. Uh, he still he does have that Disruptor though, so uh, maybe, but as you said, like the, the numbers, the economy of Stardock is just absolutely insane, the amount of Avengers that he has. Um, it's going to take a lot more than one good Purification Nova for... Oh no, and the Disruptor's stuck! It's, I was wondering where it was! It's stuck behind, behind the wall! <laughs> oh no! It's Disruptors stuck. <laughs> we need a prison. <laughs> the, only way, the only way out is to kill the pylon powering the, the robo. So he doesn't really want to do that. But um, Chance is just in a. <laughs> they can't help. Position. They can't help. There's two disruptors. Two disruptors would honestly, would honestly be pretty good right now. Let's be real here. Uh, but they just can't be a part of the fight. He has to break them out. Ah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't know if he's realized yet. Like, there we go. What uh. prison? Takes so, man, and Stardark, he's, he's got, you know, he's, he doesn't have any tech units kind of in this arm, it's still a lot of gateway units, and normally against Disruptors, you want to go for those high value kind of targets, but Stardark doesn't really have any high value units at all, they're all just the same value, so... The Chance's army, it's even though it's small, it's it's pretty tech heavy. Oh my god, exactly. Meanwhile, the first Nova goes off. There's still one more Nova in this. Stardock, he actually split up his army, so this is only half of Stardock's army contending with Chance, so this is best case scenario for Chance. Yeah, indeed. And meanwhile, though, Stardock, he does manage to cancel the the fourth base for Chance using that mobility from those you know, Blink Stalkers and Charge Lots. And even though Stardock did get repelled at the, the third base by Chance, Chance is still stuck on three bases. Yeah, and I'm a little bit afraid though because Sadok is giving a lot of opportunity to Chance right now. Like again, like Sadok is only fighting with half his army. He hasn't really quite pulled the trigger. He still hasn't remade that war prism. Like he, he's very limited with how aggressive he can be. Um, still having a lot of his army back at home. Um, but we'll see though because he could be setting himself up for even potentially a bit of a surround. Oh. Yeah, but this is the problem, Chance, and the moment he moves out, there's an army to contend with, but there's also an equally as large army at home, and there we go, the third base goes down, and I think that in the end, like, this is going to force Chance to move out across the map, but with how many units Starlock has, he can just hit from multiple angles and Yay. just crush this army. Exactly, Chance is 100% all in now, he has to try to end the game with what he has, the Nervous go up, and they will connect with so many Stalkers, Jesus Christ, just like that, Starlock, he plummets in supply, but it's still higher than that of Chance. Yeah, and Stark doesn't even need to pull the probes, he comes from around, and GG, Chance is going to concede, and Stardock is going to take this map. Yeah, Stardock is taking oh. it to the ace match, mate. We have an ace match, light. We have an ace match. Oh my god, mate, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I was a little bit afraid, I was a little bit scared that Stardock, again, was giving too many opportunities to chance but at the end of the day he was also playing it very safe and he knew how big of a lead he had so he it was almost impossible for him to to throw it away almost almost
Um, <laughs> and now we we have game three, mate. I I, I, I I'm just happy to see. I, I'm impressed to see Stardust go toe to toe with um, a 6K plus Korean player. Like that's insane. Yeah, indeed. That's really cool. And Chance is gonna have to you know, keep in mind he's playing a new opponent, someone he hasn't played yet in the sparkling tuna. So, um, can have to see. Is he gonna stick to something that he feels a bit more comfortable and back himself, or is he gonna do something a little bit more out of the way and wild mm. to throw Stardock off? That's a good question. That's a good question, right? Like, because when I think of Chance, I don't really think of a very cheesy player, but maybe be just we haven't seen that side of him, you know? Like, we, we let's be real, we have very limited exposure to Chance. We've only seen him play in a couple of these tournaments. Maybe, maybe his hand will be forced. Indeed, let's dive into it. Like, here we go. Sporting in the top right position. Speaking of the man, it is currently 1 1. Can he take the series? It is match point representing himself. It is chance. And sporting in the bottom right hand corner of Berlin Grad LE, we have. The Australian Protoss player representing the Cranky Ducklings, tying it up 1-1 in that last game, taking it to the ace match. It is Starduck. Social distance thing. Oh yeah, once again, <laughs> the probes, they, they, stay, they stay far apart. They do not Come into contact. Indeed, and as we see, um, two stalker opening again for both players. Pretty, pretty ordinary stuff. Um, again, curious to see which player will take the initiative. Do you expect both players to open with the sentry and be safe flight, given it's the ace match? Oh, hold on, I'm, I'm fanatizing you in the chat. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yes. God damn it, Chase. God damn it. Why am I being for no? Talking about we're talking about Rufio, the cat. Rufus? Rufio! God damn it. Who the hell is Rufio? <laughs> Shaking my head. Did you not like watch Hook growing up by the way? Is that not a thing? No. What? I had a very sheltered childhood. Oh my god. Yeah. You poor you poor thing. That's it's okay. <laughs> See, this is what happens. Okay, I watched... you know, if you grow up without hook, then you get COVID. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'm not. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah here we go, like... <laughs> what were you gonna say? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm losing it. <laughs> oh, God. But we have. Like we have two adapts, and we have a Stargate. Oh my god, mate, the first player to go full donkey. I hope Seether's in the chat. We have not just two adepts, we're getting four, mate. Let me add him. <laughs> I think he is in the chat. Four adepts, light. What, what is this? What, is, what, is, <laughs> what does this mean, what is mate? This, what does, what this, does mean? this mean, light? <laughs> Shit. You know, two adepts, uh -huh. it can be... It's it's a, it's an early commitment, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. stalkers scale so much better than adepts as we lead mm -hmm. um, into the the mid game. So, what has Chance got to want to accomplish? Do you think? And he's gonna get scouted with these two stalkers. Ooh. Actually, he's gonna try and hunt them down here. This is a very important scout because I mean, Stardock already saw the two adept opener because of the pylon, but now he confirms that there's a much bigger commitment. As you were saying, with this commitment, it's one of those things where, mate, you could be blocking with a shield battery. Doesn't even matter, mate. And with enough adepts, you can power through any shield battery. Man, we had a, a recall from um, Stardock to save those stalkers, and actually. Stardock's actually going to send these a couple more stalkers across the map. I'm not sure about this yet. I want to send those back. But we have an Oracle on the way. And given this kind of adept opening, we've got more adepts coming from Chance yeah. too. <laughs> How's this going to come into effect? Because adepts can't shoot up like... Chase, Chase, hold me. I'm getting ZVP flashbacks with mass adept coming across the map. Oh, God. Stardock, wall off, puppy, wall off. Um, he needs... Um, seriously, though, he needs a probe here to wall off with the gateway. At, the, at, at that wall, he throws down a, a... Oh, my God, a shield battery instead. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Maybe shoot that shield battery and he's in. 
and here we go, and he's got the, the escape contingency as well, and Zuck's gonna come in on one base versus one base versus probes are valuable, right? Oh my god, probes are falling left and right. Meanwhile, that Oracle across map has barely done anything. There was a shield battery oh. in that mineral line. Because of Stardock. that shield battery, nothing was done, and Stardock is losing everything in his main. <laughs> he's just giving a GG. Oh. What happened? What? It, it just fell apart. <laughs> Gee. Something really cute though. I do want to mention, mm -hmm. um, Chance took out the minerals just outside Stark's yeah. ramp with his probe, with that scouting probe. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you noticed, because like, you're not a high-level PvP expert, but mm -hmm. I knew from that moment it was going to be... <laughs> A chance victory. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I, unfortunately, like, Stardock, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I was looking at his minerals. I'm pretty sure he had enough minerals to throw down a gateway. Um, I don't know if there was enough room because of the Sim City. I would have to look again. But ideally, like, if there's that big of a commitment of, of, of adepts, you, you, you fully wall off, right? Um, like, a, like a solid wall, if you will. Um, and then, then of course, that's how kind of you you hold the tide. So yeah, it was a <laughs> it was it was a rough sight to see, mate. Oh god, again, just like my ZVPs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, was, it was rough indeed, light. And we kind of see here, um, <sighs> chance. I don't know if it's with his experience, but even though Starbucks is a very formidable PvP player, he managed to take take this game. So. Um, we're gonna have chance for Scarlet as our, our next series. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. We go from one PvP to the other. Um, <laughs> we go from one PvP to the other. Chance he takes down an Australian Protoss and he will move on to face a Polish Protoss. One of many because I just realized if you look at the bracket, our two fi semi-finals that were waiting for us in the upper and lower semis are both Polish Protoss.